first thing, you know, we have a little look at the box itself to make sure that you know, there's no obvious damage and whatnot. And of course, uh, this one looks pretty good. Get that top off. Take the instrument out. This happens to come with a bag, which is awesome. And the bag looks like it's in good shape. All that stuff. Beautiful red. Nice red burst here. Okay. So, I'm going to have a quick look at this. Uh, no obvious signs of any damage from shipping or anything like that. Okay. My my first impression is not bad. not bad. We have some high action, higher than I would like, which is forgivable because uh, some of these instruments will wind up in the hands of people that want to, they're heavy handed, let's say, or, play, or maybe they play slide and whatnot. So things have to be averaged out. Anyway, this is. That looks, that's a 5 mil adjuster. Okay. Oh, nice crack. Hope you heard that. You know, I'm spreading the strings here to give myself some, some clearance here. Okay. It's looking better. I like to see the neck pretty straight. Okay. We are at tension, that is where I'd pitch. Uh, I haven't uh, put it on a, a tuner or anything like that, but I, can, I just know I can feel the tension in the strings. Uh, it might be, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be off a few cents, but that's all good, okay? So that's, uh, the, 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 uh, truss rod has been adjusted, it should sit pretty. What I'm probably going to do is, uh, work from the head on down. We'll go around the headstock, uh, do some housekeeping, clean that stuff up. Tools, okay, we got a number one. Phillips screwdriver. We have uh, my choice of uh, uh, tuner, which is an A440 uh, tuning fork. Okay. Of course, any uh, tuning device will work. Uh, the adjuster that came with the instrument, the uh, uh, handy dandy spring winder, side cutters. Hopefully, we don't have to do any of that. Brand new instrument shouldn't have to. And uh, 10 mil open end wrench to. Uh, Get the headstock there, and that's where we're going to start. We're going to adjust some light here so we can see what we're doing. Grab my, my glasses. Alrighty. So I'm going to be moving around here, and I'll be talking a bit. So uh, pay attention. I like to blab and share some uh, some good information. You might uh, pick up a tidbit or two. So now I'm going through the uh, the threaded inserts, and I did check them previously on break, and they were actually pretty good. So I'm just double checking those. What I do is I just just snug them up, just snug them up. Okay, you don't want to uh, because they, they they're just thin cylinders, uh, metal. They'll, they'll they'll break. Okay, and then go around and again snugging up the the screws on the, the tuning buttons here. Now some tuners tuning buttons that is they, they don't have they don't have any screws here. You don't have to worry about. It. Or it could be a slot, whatever. Uh, you use a typically a three sixteenths. Uh, flat end screwdriver. Now, one more thing. One of my favorite tools in doing setups and service on instruments, okay? Awesome. Uh, any capo will do, really, okay? Guitar capo, that is. So I'm going to pop that on there because I'm going to take the saddle out and shave a little bit off there. I've already made a decision as to how much, okay, what, uh, I, I do this pretty quick, but what I want to see is uh, um, a certain amount of gap where the string, uh, the string, see the neck meets the body, let's say. I want to see the height of about a nickel on the, the treble side here, uh, between say the, in this case the 14th fret and the, the first string, and say the thickness of two dimes on the bass side, okay. Might be more or less depending on how the instrument is. That's a that's a great uh, uh, generalization for uh, uh, say s setting your heart your, your your height using some some readily available tools. And that's my twenty five cents worth. Okay, so I'm gonna 
just dump these strings a bit, get the tension off of them. This will also tell me, as I go uh, and release uh, this tension, how well the tuners are actually working. Are they binding? Is it, are they problematic? Anything like that? Is there any sketchiness whatsoever? So those are, those are fairly, fairly loose. Okay. I'm going to take my side cutters here. I'm not going to cut anything, but I'm going to get under the head here and pull these pins up. Sometimes they don't want to come up and you have to wrestle them a little bit. You can take a, a little block of wood, carefully put it back here and lever uh, those heads out. Or you can use the, uh, there's usually a notch on the back of the string winder. You have to be very, very careful that you don't mark up the top, okay? I always keep my fingers between the ends of the, uh, the side cutters here and the top of the instrument so I know I'm not doing any uh, damage. Okay. Nice little tray for that stuff. I'll pop this out. Now, as I said, I've already made a judgment call as to how much I'm going to take off of that. Okay. And I'm looking inside the, the slot here and there's nothing in there. There's no, sometimes you find shims in there and it's uh, a, a good deal to, uh, to take them out before you go chopping away at the saddle. So I'm going to take a simple pencil and I'm going to scribe a line of how much I want to take off. Now this is about the thickness of a dime. Not so much uh, a small amount here, a very very small amount here can make huge difference on, in the playability of the instrument. Now as I said I already made a judgment uh, that is, I already made a, a judgment call as far as how much I wanted to take off of this, okay? Uh, uh, I would recommend if you're doing this for yourself, nibble, 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 okay? Small amounts and feel it out, okay? We still have to adjust the, or, or recut the nut, remember that? Uh, and that will kind of balance, that'll be the, the last little bit in our uh, balancing act to get this thing tip top for the, uh, for the, the end user, okay? Anyway, I'm going to chop this or take a oh, back and uh, uh, I'm going to sand off uh, the material. I'll be right back. I have the uh, saddle has been trimmed. I'm going to pop that back in there and we'll reinstall our strings. Now you see how handy that capo is up there? That thing just rocks. When you're doing work around your own guitar and stuff like that. There's a bunch of tricks I'll show you uh, for use with the, with the capo. Really cool. Okay, so that's all good. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tension this up. I'm not gonna bring it right up to, to full pitch because if there's any, you know, further adjustments, that I want to make with the saddle or around the instrument in general. I don't want to be stressing the strings out. Just putting some pressure on them, you know? Okay. Just so the instrument's kind of got a little bit of compression on it. I'm going to check the, the height looks great. That's great. It's wonderful. That's just a visual cue, okay? Having the, the capo at the end kind of uh, simulates, you know, what's, uh, you know, where, where it's going to wind up eventually anyway, so we're, we're very much into the ballpark with that. Okay, so, uh, we're going to cut that nut. <clears throat> now remember, I don't have the strings up to tension, as I said. So, the instrument is starting to compress. So, it's kind of in a, in a uh, it's a little bit of a float state right now. It's not under full, full tension, but once I get this, the instrument, like, all the adjustments made, and get it up to tension. It's going to it's going to come up. The neck is going to come up a little bit, and the the truss rod is going to load. Everything is going to be uh, more or less at its final uh, uh, living condition. Let's say, okay. All right. So now again, the, the caveat there is uh, if I do have to reduce the tension to take the strings off, I don't want to stress them out and all that. Okay. So cutting the nut. This is a highly specialized thing, which takes a while to do properly. Let's say you you know. Uh, you have to, for one, have the, some decent tools. I have a simple process I used for gauging where the uh, strings want to live. And I'm using a gap of light associated with each string. OK. 
Okay. Uh, if you want to know exactly what I'm using for files and stuff like that, stay tuned or catch up on some of our other videos. I have some of that information kicking around. Okay. That means you might have to spend some quality time with us. Not quite a shame. Anyway, I'm finding that the strings are actually popping out of the nut. Like they're 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 popping out. What that tells me is the nut, the slots themselves are a little bit too tight and they're grabbing the string. So as I as I cut the nut, I'm I'm chiseling down the sides a little bit to widen the slot a little bit and give it some uh, some breathing room. I'm going to generalize a little bit what I was just doing. This is a, that's a 50 mil, or not mil, a 50 thou uh, needle file, okay, which nice cutting edge, edge on there, and it's tapered to a nice point, really cool. Uh, the one I was just using a moment ago, this is uh, an old uh, file I've been using for 20 some odd years. It's, uh, it's meant for a D string on an acoustic, so it's, it's awesome, it cuts out the pretty wide range of strings when you're used to it. And this is a 20 thou. I'm going to go with a 20 thou here, okay? So I'm going to nibble out the G string on this. The G string is going to be about 26, 24, 25, 26, depending on the gauge. Okay, and I just like getting it kind of prepped like that, and then, because if I start noodling with that too much, the, the other file, it will it'll over widen the slot and they don't want that. Okay, this comes from experience and all that kind of stuff. So there's that. Now I'm into the, the second string. Again, I'm looking for a little gap of light. I'm back cutting the nut and forward cutting the nut. Forward cut is the most important. Okay, finally, got another old file that I will use here. Not even sure, this has been ground down, boy, I, I, uh, I uh, repurposed this particular gauge years and years and years and years and years ago. Uh, anyway, it still works. It's dandy. And it will do that first string. It's designed to do first strings and second strings on the acoustic. More for, towards the first string. Okay, almost there. Beauty. That is just dandy. So now I know that those uh, string slots are nice and free. Just a little housekeeping there. So the strings are going to ride back and forth freely. Okay. And let's see. We've got the truss rod has been set. The saddle height's been set. The nut has been set. Those three elements, this is very, very important, those three elements create the ideal triangle, the golden triangle of a setup, as I call it, okay, of action, you might say. Uh, the nut is typically a fixed point. Once it's cut, it's cut. The relief in the neck is an adjustable uh, point. The saddle height is an adjustable point, whether it's an electric, acoustic, whatever. Those are typically uh, adjustable items on most instruments. Think of it like an equal sided triangle. If one of those is off or not happy, the whole thing suffers. Okay, so think of that, that equal sided triangle. When everything is adjusted, it's in harmony, all those sides are equal, everything is in balance, and you have a happy guitar. Okay, so now the last uh, process here is bring it up to pitch. It's old school. No, um, no stretching, no nothing, because I might have to make another adjustment. I don't want those strings stressed out before I do that. Now that action is just peachy. That's great. That's great. Okay, but I can feel it's just a hair spongy. So, 
being fussy that I am, you always like things to be nicey nice. Okay, there we go. That should do. That was just a little tweak. Perfectly in tune. Awesome. Okay. That's great. But then, okay, now I'm going to give it a stretch. I'm going to push that pin down. If they come up, that's the ball end and the, and the string will sometimes ride the, these pins up. Uh, just push them down. Sometimes they can be stiff. There's ways to deal with that. Notice, I'm not spending a great deal of time being perfect about this, okay? I'm not perfecting that tuning. There's no point, no point, because I'm going to stretch them again and put it out of tune. Okay, a little bit of logic goes a long way. Now we're into the end rhyme, okay? Got a pick. So I use relative uh, uh, tuning techniques there, okay? And then I cross-check the span with the fifth string, or sorry, the, the fifth fret on the first string, that's an A, with, the, with that A which is uh, uh, removed by two octaves. That'll tell me if, this, if the, the instrument is, uh, is pretty good in tune, okay? Okay, we got a little sizzle there. I got a... <laughs> A screwdriver or anything with a, a fairly flat end. I'll show you that you, this is a, something you don't see every day. Let's knock that a little bit. Still there. Be very, very careful. I don't recommend you do this, but this is what happens. Okay? Just a high fret there. happier just like that now okay that is pretty much that uh, what I'm gonna do though as uh, the final say the very very last thing is I'm gonna let this sit for a day or so and then check it again because I adjusted the pressure in it it's in a new environment uh, this part of the world whatever you want to call it okay and if I have to adjust it again, I will do so, okay? I, it, I won't have to deal with uh, much of anything that that, uh, that bobbly fret there wasn't really a problem. See that uh, once in a while. Entry level instrument though, it doesn't warrant a full dress out because that's, uh, at this price level, this instrument's gonna sell for, oh, it's way, uh, way less than a couple hundred bucks. Uh, and. It's, it's just not warranted to do a, a leveling on it uh, at that price point, okay? I, we reserve that for inst instruments that are going to be a level above that, okay? But there's quick fixes, as you saw, as to how we can uh, get it to settle down. And, of course, the double check after, after it's been uh, living in this state for... You've got to give it a few hours to a day. And then I am personally comfortable with handing it off to, uh, uh, to the... Uh, uh, to the end user, I'm gonna go. That instrument has been serviced and it's good to go. Okay. Okay. Well, that is pretty much it. Now, to wrap it up, what you can get out of that, I guess, first and foremost, is if you're buying an instrument brand new from a reseller, ask them if it's been set up. Okay. They will probably tell you yes, regardless. But if you paid attention here. Ask them, is, you know, did you go around the headstock and tighten that stuff up? Did you cut the nut? Did it have to be cut? Did you have to adjust the neck? What about the saddle? Did you have to adjust any? If you, you know, draw them out, you know, you'll get, if they're kind of doing, well, yeah, we did, yeah, okay, okay. well, you know, maybe, you just protect yourself, okay? Uh, I've always done that for every instrument that I've sold, that uh, we make sure that, uh, they are in good order for the end user, and uh, that always makes me feel better to know that uh, somebody's getting an instrument that's uh, dollar for dollar. 
in good shape, etc. Anyway, uh, my name is Steve. Thank you for hanging out at uh, Guitar Niche. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that, got something out of that, and uh, we'll talk soon. I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping on this, get some fingerprints off it, and uh, it'll be uh, on to its new life in a, in a new home. So we're not going to bore you with that. And once again, thank you very much. Take care. Talk soon. Bye-bye.